So all of our hearts are heavy and grieving right now. Um, when you see systemic and personal injustice exposed before your eyes, um, you, um, your heart cries out in agony and your hands long for something to do. You, you want to act and, you know, um, so we, we seek the Lord uh, for wisdom and understanding and then for courage to take the steps that he invites us to take. And, um, you know, uh, five years ago, after the um, tragic shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, um, at Mother, Mother Emanuel Church, when nine African Americans lost their lives in Bible study, I, um, I found my heart drawn to uh, a very powerful lament in Psalm 10. And as I reflected on that scripture at that time and have come back to it many times these last five years and specifically again this week in response to what's happened with the tragic death of George Floyd right here in Minneapolis in our Twin Cities, I, um, uh, as I was reflecting on that back then and now, the Lord spoke to me really three three words um, as, a, as a sort of a process of response to the injustice and the breach that we see, the, the, the breaking of shalom, the, the lack of reconciliation. And so um, the, the thing that I know that I feel called to do, and I believe that, it, it, you know, inviting us as a, as a Pilgrim Center family into as well is, um, to lament, um, which is slightly different than just complaining. It's not just focused on the circumstance. It's, it's really directing our heart to God, saying, Lord, see this injustice, and we're crying out to you because we're helpless, and we need your help. Um, and so um, we, need, we need to see change. And, um, and the second word is to repent. And, you know, the word that came to Mali all of those years ago uh, in Rwanda, standing, looking over those hills on that morning when they were there beginning this work of the Pilgrim Center. And the Lord said to her, you know, you are to repent of that which your people in the West have done to create this environment. And so we must repent. And as a as a white American, you know, to stand in that place, identificational repentance, to repent over the systemic racism and the, 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 the whole ideology of white supremacy and privilege. And then the third word is um, an old word. It's the word foment. Of course, in more current, foment means to be an inst to instigate, to catalyze, to, to seek, to agitate for change. And I think it's both. I think it's the, the passage that um, Dr. Arthur has taught us so beautifully in Isaiah 42, where it talks about the servant of the Lord who comes in, and he's so tender, the bruised reed he doesn't break. The smoldering wicks he does not snuff out. He's so tender to those who have been afflicted. But he's tenacious because he will not relent until he brings justice on the earth. And he utilizes his people to be advocates of that, to be agents of change, to help to see that transformation come into our world. And so that is the... Um, I, I, I believe is the invitation, the ongoing invitation for our work in the Pilgrim Center is to, in, in this growing movement of reconciliation, you know, is, is we, we look and we see the brokenness and we lament 
but we don't stop there. We, we, we take the step of taking responsibility in repentance, and then we seek the Lord for wisdom and understanding and courage to, to foment, to, to comfort and cover and care for those who have been wounded and afflicted that they might be healed and to continue to advocate for um, true justice and shalom to come to our communities and to the world. What does the reconciliation heart of Jesus have to say to a divided city, a divided nation, a divided human race? You know, it's almost uh, do instead of say, because uh, that call, that uh, the answer to Molly's prayer, uh, she really translated that in her own way when she was before sitting in the circle of, of people in retreat. Uh, she said, now I have a chance to, to, uh, to speak to you and I'm gonna put a chair in the middle of the room and uh, I'm, I, I was asked to ask your forgiveness for what we had done to divide you from each other. And I'm going to my knees here and I ask you to pray for me to be forgiven. 